Hello Eternal Life fans, it's Rowan here from the Eternal Life Fan Club and today I want to talk about if we can know if we're saved. It's a very important question that uh, we all need to ask. Uh, it's, it's a very, very important question. Um, a lot of people try to justify the idea of saying that they know they're saved through this verse. Okay, I'm just telling what I heard. I've seen a lot of people use John 3.16 because it's one of the most famous Bible verses on salvation. So, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So I've seen Christians point to this verse and say, well, see, I can know I'm saved because I believe in Jesus. I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins and everything. And so they think that, that that's a guaranteed ticket. And that that's why they would justify saying, I know I'm saved. I, I know in the future I got my eternal life secured, right? But um, that's not what this verse is saying, actually. If you interpret the verse, notice it's saying, whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Okay? Should not perish. It's not saying if you believe in Jesus, uh, you will not perish. You should not perish. And why is that? Because if you believe in Jesus, then you should not perish because if you truly believed in Jesus, that would be inspiring your life to change for the better. You'd be a, a real, you'd become a real Jesus follower and you'd actually obey his commands. So, and that is the road to eternal life. That is the narrow path to eternal life, is actually obeying the commands of Jesus. And so this, what a lot of people do, is they're basically twisting this verse to say, like, they know they're saved. Now, when you think about it, the idea that you can know you're saved, it conflicts with so many ideas in the Bible. The most, One of the most important concepts you'll find all throughout the Bible is the fear of the Lord the fear of the Lord being the beginning of wisdom. So let me just ask you this. If you're one of these Christians that says, I know I'm saved. I know I got my, you know, salvation in the bag. It's, 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 uh, it's locked down, it's for sure. Now, how at that point do you really fear God? Okay. It's basically, anyone who claims to say they know they're saved, you know, they know that in the future, they're going to be saved. It's, it's, as the same, it's the same as once saved, always saved. These people who say they can do anything and they're still going to be saved. It's pretty much the exact same thing because how do you know the future? Right? In the Bible, all throughout, there's, there's examples of people who fall off of the narrow path. It's a narrow path. You have to strive to be on the narrow path because you could fall off. You, you know, that's why we can't know for sure we're going to be saved. We can't know for sure until the end judgment, okay? Because life is a test. And anyone who's claiming to know that they're saved is claiming to know the results of the score, right? When everything's tallied up, when God's judging everyone, the end judgment, separating the sheep from the goats based upon how we treated other people, which ultimately God is going to God is going to count that as if that's how we treated him, right? Jesus is going to, Jesus said, you know, how you treat the least of these is how you treated me. So, who can honestly say they know for sure their future that they're going to measure up and they're going to have all the right fruits to merit salvation? No, we can't know that. That's God's call. That is God's decision. And to say, to jump in there and say, like, I know I'm saved, I know for sure, I got my eternal life, it's very arrogant, and it's not humble, like the Bible talks about that we should humble ourselves like a little child. Is it a very humble attitude to go around claiming that you're saved and you know it? No, and it's, it also doesn't portray a fear of God. One of my favorite Bible verses, I have it memorized, Philippians 2.12, you'll find that verse in like, that, that I use that verse probably more in my videos than any other. 
because I like what it portrays. It's continue to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I like it because it's showing that salvation, our salvation here, the pearl of great price. This is an important topic. We need to think about this topic of salvation. It's that, that verse, Philippians 2.12 is saying, hey, look, no, you have to work your salvation out with fear and trembling. That's how much we're kind of scared that we're not saved. We should always be questioning ourselves and second guessing, are we really saved? Like, do we really know if we've, if we're good enough, if we've done enough, if we're obeying the commands, right, of Jesus? Obviously, I can't imagine being perfect, right? So I'm not saying God's standard is that we have to be absolutely perfect. And I do think there's a level of grace. And where is that level? Where is that line? No one can say for sure where that line is crossed. And it could be different for different people. I'm going to go into this in a future video. But like the actual, the, the actual parameters, like how we would be judged, it could be very different for different people based upon the resources we've been given, the light we've been given. Um, people, Some people are going to be judged extra strictly such as someone who's putting themselves putting themselves out there as like a teacher, right? Someone like me, I gotta be extra careful because I'll be judged according to the Bible. I'll be judged in a stricter manner. I'll be held to a higher standard. So that's why I'm making this video. Because as a teacher, as someone who's trying to teach the Bible and the, the way to be a true Jesus follower, I would feel if someone came up to me and said, hey, hey, how, can I know I'm saved? Like, how do I know I'm saved? If somebody came up to me and asked that question, I would feel like I had complete blood on my hands. I would feel so guilty if I were to tell that person, hey, yeah, yeah, you're, you can know you're saved. You know, oh, you know, John 3, 16 right there. Like, no, I would feel so guilty and I'd feel like I blood on my hands. Because basically, by telling that person they know they're saved now, they're not going to have the right motivation, that fear motivation that we need to have according to the Bible. Remember, the Bible does say that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's the beginning. You have to start with the fear of the Lord. And anyone who's going around saying they know they're saved, they don't have the first point down. There's, there's obviously much more to understanding God than just the fear of the Lord. You need to understand the love of God and so on. But you need to start with the fear of the Lord. That's why the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's why I'm always coming back to the fear of the Lord because most of my audience, probably, if there's any atheists or something watching, a lot of them haven't gotten the fear of the Lord down, which I need to perfect that message out there to get the people to eat, at least fear the Lord because you're never going to understand God unless you start with that. Um, so basically... To wrap this up a little bit here, can I know I'm saved? Absolutely not. It is absolutely like, uh, ever heard the saying, you know, don't count your chickens before they've hatched? That is what it's doing. If anyone who's saying that like, they know they're saved, they know they're gonna, they know they're gonna be written in the book of life. No, no. In the Bible, you can be blotted out of the book of life. You could have had your name written in there and then be blotted out. You can fall away, right? You can't, how do you know the future? How do you know the future, right? We don't know. And here's the other thing. Here's another reason I can, I can show you from the Bible that is unbiblical. It's unbiblical to claim that you know you're saved. Because the verse right here, I got a verse that says, uh, for we are saved by hope. This is in Romans 8, okay? For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? This is why I love, I love saying, like, I hope I'm saved. I have a lively hope in my, that I'll be entering the kingdom of heaven one day. It's a hope. It's not an assurance. It's not a guarantee. It's not a knowing, it's a hope. And this verse is basically saying it because it's like we're saved, we have a lively hope. And if you hope for something, 
then what? By definition, if you're hoping for something, you're you don't then you you don't know. That's what a hope is. It's hoping we have hope for something because we don't know. That's the whole point. That's why we say we have hope. It's a word for that. And that's the word to apply to our salvation. It's a lively hope, not a knowing. And that's basically it. I would say that Satan, Satan literally wants people to go around claiming that they know they're saved. I've seen so many um, pastors, preachers, you name it, any teachers of the Bible, I've seen so many of them say that they know they're saved and telling their audience that uh, they can also know they're saved. You know, you said such and such prayer, you know, we've all heard it. We've all seen the videos, they're so common out there. People acting like they could just know they're saved, like they know the future. No. No. And, um, yeah, just very kind of arrogant. And just think about that, I guess. If I would just encourage you, if you're one of these people that says you know you're saved, how the heck do you know? Like, this life is a test, and don't count the score before the test is finished. Like, we gotta, we gotta finish the test. We gotta finish the race, strive on the narrow path in trying to be obedient to, to, to Jesus and the Bible and God, okay, by having this relationship where it's like, you know, even like, in, take a normal uh, relationship in, in a, from like a, a, a family unit, like parents can disown their children. There is a point where a child can cross the line, do, be too evil, and it's like the love for the child isn't necessarily unconditional. People like to throw out the idea that, oh, God's this, will just love us unconditionally. That's not the message of the Bible. The Bible says that God does does hate people, okay? Um, I actually have a verse right here. It says, the Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. So, there is a way to be, um, fall out of love, like the God doesn't have to love you. He's not required to save you. It's something we have to endure. We have to be tested. This is the trial. This is the, this is life. It's a vetting process to see who gets into the kingdom of heaven. And yes, that's about it. I think. I think I said my piece, and I think I've. I'm washing my hands of of the the blood of the people out there as a teacher. I have to teach the full counsel of God. That's what I'm required to do as like someone who's going out there and trying to teach people and help people on their path and their walk with God to, to the kingdom of heaven, right? I can't just tickle everyone's ears and give this misleading picture that salvation is something you can just like say a prayer and you know you're saved and all this garbage you hear from the world. I think Satan is out there and he's doing his master plan to deceive as many people as possible. Tempt them into these ideas that you can know you're saved in this nonsense. Because that will ultimately lead people that they wouldn't fear God anymore. Because if you know you're saved, where is the fear of God? It's, it's gone. It's, it's, uh, there is no fear of God in that way of thinking. So, that's it. Don't count your chickens before they've hatched. May you live forever. Uh, may you get eternal life from God. God's the, God's the only one that can give us eternal life. So, may you pass the test of this life. See you in another video. Bye-bye.